Today, I will explain to you Rich Habits. The author is Thomas C. Corley, a renowned American accountant and certified financial planner. He established an accounting firm that provides financial services to over 1,000 small businesses and individuals. Due to his job, he had access to many wealthy individuals and took the opportunity to conduct an interesting survey. Over the course of five years, he studied the daily habits of 177 wealthy people and 128 poor individuals. While this sample size might not be large, almost every individual was a multi-millionaire. Corley conducted a detailed survey and found that there were commonalities among the rich as well as among the poor. However, the habits of the rich and poor were distinctly different. The habits of the rich continuously bring in money and a prosperous life, while the habits of the poor lead to a life of scarcity and low energy. So what constitutes a rich person? Why study the rich? Is money everything? While there are many things more important than money in this world, if someone amasses a vast fortune, they certainly know something more than the average person, or have more experience and have encountered more pitfalls on their journey to wealth. Regardless of whether you're keen on making money or want to become a multimillionaire, there are admirable and simple qualities in these wealthy individuals that can enhance your life. Upon finishing this book, you might realize that being rich is not only about material wealth, but also includes spiritual wealth, a good state of life, and harmonious interpersonal relationships. Corley mentions at the beginning of the book that he provided financial consultation for an entrepreneur. The entrepreneur was highly competent and his company was thriving, but he couldn't balance his finances Every payday he faced tremendous financial stress. Corley spent months analyzing the company's expenses, production process, labor rates and industry comparative data, yet couldn't pinpoint the problem. It wasn't until he discovered that the entrepreneur had terrible lifestyle habits, frequently spending extravagantly on nightlife, that the financial stress made sense. If the entrepreneur continued with these habits, no matter how successful his company, he would never solve his financial problems, let alone become rich. The author's definition of a rich person is unique. It's not just about how much money one earns. True wealth is being able to maintain a balance in financial matters and sustain a healthy lifestyle. If these conditions aren't met continuously, one cannot be considered rich. To illustrate these traits, he specifically chose self-made, self-reliant rich individuals rather than those who won the lottery or inherited their fortunes. The theories in Rich Habits have been published in multiple countries and hundreds of media platforms, changing the global readership's perception of the rich. People often assume the rich live more comfortably and leisurely, but after reading this book, you'll discover that the rich are actually a group of individuals who are better at planning and patience. Next, I will explain rich habits to you in two parts. The first part focuses on the term rich, detailing which habits make people increasingly wealthy and which ones lead to increasing scarcity and even despair. The second part emphasizes the term habits, discussing how to develop good habits that improve both life and career. In the first section, I will analyze the habits of the wealthy in detail from three aspects daily life, personality traits, and interpersonal interactions. Firstly, what's the difference between the daily behaviors of the rich and the poor? The most significant difference is that the rich tend to be more careful and restrained in their daily lives. If you observe the daily schedules of world-class billionaires, you'll find that they typically have hectic work routines, are full of energy, and are in good health. The rich generally pay great attention to their health. They clearly understand the importance of health. In a specific survey, 76% of wealthy people do aerobic exercises, such as jogging, power walking, cycling and swimming, at least three times a week. In fact, these exercises don't necessarily require a gym membership and can be done regardless of one's financial status. No matter how busy they are with their meals, 
Over half of the rich don't dine in fast food restaurants that serve fried foods. The reason is simple. While fast food may be delicious, it can lead to health issues like obesity. Everyone knows this, but it's hard to resist the allure of tasty food. The wealthy can often resist because health is more important than taste. When rich people decide whether or not to do something, they don't only consider immediate desires, but also the long-term benefits. Similarly, they are rational when shopping and don't spend lavishly just to satisfy fleeting desires. Instead, they carefully plan their finances. 85% of the rich read at least two books a month and 88% read for at least 30 minutes daily. They tend to enjoy historical books, believing that stories from the past can provide solutions to present-day challenges. Among them, 55% read self-growth books and 58% delve into biographies of successful individuals to study their experiences. The most popular reading material is professional literature. 79% of the wealthy prefer to read the most accurate and authoritative information instead of relying on hearsay or second-hand sources. Secondly, let's discuss the personality traits of the wealthy. They possess certain unique beliefs, trusting in their abilities and passions and in their decision-making skills. Among them, some are outspoken while others are reserved. Regardless of their demeanor, they usually exude confidence. In a study by Corey, over half of the wealthy individuals don't believe in destiny, thinking they have control over their lives. The other half firmly believe that they can rise from the middle class to affluence. Note that this confidence is not a superiority complex or arrogance, it's a trust in their own abilities. Over 90% of the rich believe that hard work is more important than a high IQ. They trust in the adage that perseverance can compensate for lack of talent. This self-assurance provides the wealthy with a more optimistic mindset, believing persistence can bring good fortune. Over 90% of the wealthy consider optimism a crucial factor for success. Furthermore, more than 92% believe that by sticking to what they love, they can attract good luck. They are always focused and persistent in pursuing their dreams and goals, spending an average of 10 years from when they start working towards their dream until they achieve it. Imagine all the adversities and opposition they face during these 10 years. Without the aforementioned confidence, it would be challenging to persevere. As decision makers, regardless of gender or age, the rich display an unwavering determination. When making decisions for their businesses, they decide swiftly like generals and wholly accept the consequences of their choices. They don't dawdle, nag, or overthink major issues, but act decisively and promptly. This trait may seem similar to gamblers. However, the primary distinction between gamblers and astute decision makers is that the wealthy are not recklessly bold. They contemplate deeply before decisions, equipped with expertise and responsibility. Hence, those who can make clear-cut decisions demonstrate excellent execution skills marking a good decision maker. Whether introverted or extroverted, the rich are always filled with passion, which is genuine and enduring, not a fleeting impulse. 82% of the wealthy stick to what interests them, setting and pursuing grand objectives. 55% of the wealthy spend at least a year intently pursuing a particular goal. In the pursuit of their goals, they clearly understand the priorities of all tasks and won't force themselves into irrelevant activities. They would unhesitatingly decline any person or thing that might impede their life's aspirations, even if it may come off as cold or impersonal. However, the rich understand that without these refusals, their goals become even harder to achieve. This isn't selfishness. Given their often lofty aims, they need to give it their all, so they are incredibly protective of their time and energy. The wealthy often prefer to tackle challenges head-on, eliminating all unnecessary obstacles. All right, here's the translation. Okay. Thirdly, let's take a look at the habits of the wealthy in terms of interpersonal relationships. 
The wealthy are very good at communication and excel at building solid, long-lasting relationships. First, the wealthy speak more cautiously. Most gossip is negative and doesn't do any good for relationships. Why is spreading gossip not advisable? Because judging others this way makes one narrow-minded and bitter over time. Think about it. We've all been victims and propagators of gossip at some point. I've seen some who, despite being eloquent and insightful, accomplish nothing over the years. They have one thing in common. They love commenting on others, online and offline. This is a case of misdirected intelligence. Moreover, gossip often backfires. In a close-knit group, the subject of the gossip always finds out who the gossiper is, which creates an unpayable debt. Even without gossip, the wealthy don't just say whatever comes to mind. 94% of the wealthy don't vocalize all their inner thoughts. They even proactively control their emotions. 81% of the wealthy have developed the habit of controlling negative emotions. At first, people might be wary of them, but over time, they come to see these individuals as pleasant and easygoing. Whether they're angry or sad, they think before they act, analyzing their feelings and ensuring that their communication achieves their goals rather than conveying negativity. Moreover, the wealthy are very thoughtful towards their friends, making sure to call and send birthday wishes. Up to 80% of millionaires take time out of their busy schedules to call and send birthday wishes to people they care about. Among these people, some are not close, but a simple birthday call can be a lifeline for the relationship. 25% of these individuals reciprocate, taking the relationship out of life support mode. Just like with birthdays, they also call during important moments in someone's life, such as the birth of a baby or a promotion solidifying the bond. The wealthy have many loyal friends around them, but people often attribute this to their wealth, overlooking their efforts. Although they do consider it things to maintain relationships, these millionaires believe honesty is the best policy. 85% of the wealthy insist on telling the truth. They are against lying, even white lies. Being truthful not only gives them an upright and trustworthy image, but also boosts their self-respect. The wealthy typically have high self-esteem. Lying diminishes their moral standards, and the cost of covering up lies is too high. In interpersonal relations, the wealthy focus on building effective connections and solidifying relationships. 86% of them network with individuals who can help them achieve their dreams and align with their values. Once you have a dream, you need to surround yourself with those who support it. Charles Schwab, the former president of Carnegie Steel Company, mentioned that he had never seen someone perform worse when praised than when criticized. The author isn't rejecting criticism but emphasizes the need for clear, constructive feedback from those who know what they're talking about. These mentors, having achieved success, provide valuable insights. The weight of advice isn't about age but the accomplishments in a particular field. If we hope to achieve our dreams, we need to surround ourselves with those who truly support and help. For those who don't offer constructive feedback but only dampen spirits, steer clear of them just as you would from gossip groups. And that concludes the habits of millionaires. In the second section, let's re-examine the concept of habits. Hume once mentioned that habit is the best guide to life. The author also believes that habit is the mother of luck. A good habit can bring good fortune to a person, so don't envy those who seem to be lucky. In reality, they might have some good habits that we haven't noticed yet. The author categorizes luck into four types. 1. Random good luck, such as winning the lottery. 2. Random bad luck or accidents, like a house suddenly being crushed by a big tree. These two kinds of luck are beyond ordinary people's control, so we won't discuss them further. However, there are two other kinds of luck we can influence. The third type of luck is opportunity. This good luck is a byproduct of good daily habits. Good habits are like apple trees. When we properly prepare the soil and diligently nurture the tree, it will bloom and bear fruit. The apples on the tree represent our good luck or opportunities. 
The fourth type of luck is misfortune. Just like good habits, bad habits also take root. They grow and eventually bear the fruits of misfortune, such as losing a job, failed investments, divorce, illness, etc. These two types of luck may seem mysterious, but they are the results of our everyday actions. To achieve success, we must attract the right kind of luck. Success has many obstacles and procrastination is the biggest one. The author believes that procrastination is a typical poverty habit which hinders you from forming good habits. Thus, to develop good habits, one must first address the issue of procrastination. Even geniuses, once they develop the habit of procrastinating, will eventually become ordinary. The main reason for procrastination is a lack of passion for one's livelihood. I've noticed many people jokingly refer to themselves as having advanced stages of procrastination. If you have this habit, it's essential to get rid of it. Let me share a story from my own life. In college, I always procrastinated on assignments, even writing them on the day they were due. This made me think I was a chronic procrastinator, though people always said this, I didn't realize how detrimental my behavior was. Once a thought forms in our mind, it drives our actions. Habitual thinking, once established, leads us to repeatedly entertain previous thoughts, resulting in increasing levels of procrastination. I seemed somewhat proud of being a procrastinator. That's just how I was. Although I stopped thinking this way, I wanted to affirm my existence. Later, I realized this behavior wasn't benefiting me at all. If I wanted to, I was actually someone who could handle tasks, write drafts, and read very quickly. I always managed to efficiently and effectively complete the most critical tasks. If I hadn't labeled myself during my freshman year, maybe I would have turned my flaws into strengths a few years earlier, overcoming my procrastination and accomplishing more meaningful things. Here's a summary of the essence of the book for you. In the first section, I detailed the habits of the wealthy mentioned in the book from three perspectives, daily life, personality traits, and interpersonal relationships. Generally speaking, the wealthy are more cautious in their words and actions, have more confidence and passion, place more emphasis on cultivating good interpersonal relationships, and possess stronger emotional control. In the second section, we revisited the relationship between habits and luck. Understanding the cure for procrastination, the biggest enemy of good habits. With the Habit Observation Chart tool, we can scrutinize our daily habits and, as a result, discard the bad ones and nurture the good ones. Lastly, I'd like to share a checklist. This checklist summarizes the main points of the book and encapsulates the habits of the 177 millionaires mentioned by the author. We need the rich habits commitments in this list because each line starts with I, making it perfect for your collection. You can forward these commitments to anyone you think of, not for any other reason, but for the positive spiritual power in these 10 promises. They are worth our repeated contemplation and appreciation. I believe you'll recognize that being rich doesn't only describe monetary and material wealth, but it also signifies a fullness and happiness in the spiritual realm. Below are the 10 commitments of wealthy habits. 1. I will cultivate daily habits, ensuring that they're followed accurately every day. 2. I will set daily, monthly, yearly, and long-term goals, then wholeheartedly pursue these goals. 3. I will enhance my self-worth every day. 4. I will pay attention to my physical health every day. 5. I will build and maintain sustainable interpersonal relationships daily. 6. I will live a disciplined life every day. 7. I will remind myself to complete today's tasks on time. 8. I will live with a wealth-building mindset. 9. Every time I receive a paycheck, I will save 10% of it. 10. Every day I will control my thoughts and emotions. Thank you for listening and watching. Visit George Kenny Art for more art and fashion for climate action. Subscribe for new brief tales and art.